Unit 8, Lesson 14, Statistical Samples. I can determine the best sample to survey based on the data needed. I can make an inference given statistical data, and I can determine if a sample is appropriate for a population. So the whole idea today is it's more of a reading class than a math class. And <clears throat> it's a lot about eliminating answer choices. So the table uh, shows the results of John's survey asking 15 people from South Carolina at random where they like to vacation most. Two people were not home to answer the survey. John claimed that more than half of the people in North Carolina, I'm sorry, in South Carolina, prefer to vacation at the beach. Is this an accurate statement? Okay, so he's asking a really large population. So he's asking the whole state of South Carolina. And he's got information about the beach, the mountains, and camping. And it says, yes, John honestly reported the results. I believe he did. Yes, uh, John randomly chose people to call. It doesn't say that, but maybe he did. No, he did not choose a large enough sample size. No, he should have called the two people that weren't home. Well, the two people that weren't home, that's not information that you're going to hold against John. The fact that he honestly reported the results, that's also not a reason that you would select that. So do we know that he chose the people at randomly to call? So let's double check. The table below shows the results of a survey asking 15 people from South Carolina where they like to vacation most. So it doesn't say that he called them at random. It doesn't say where he called them from. It doesn't say anything. It also tells me that the whole population of South Carolina is wrapped up in 13 votes. So I disagree. I think, no, he didn't choose a large enough sample size. Hayden wants to know if the residents in his town are interested in having a recreation center built. So that's like a YMCA or something like that. Which sample would allow Hayden to make a valid conclusion? Asking the children who lived in the town? Asking the people who lived on his street? Asking 50 randomly chosen people living in the towns. So these people are living in the town. Asking a random group of 50 parents at a school meeting in town. Well, you want it to be representative of the town because it says he wants to know if the residents of his town are interested. So if he asks children, that doesn't include all the adults. If he asks only people on his street, he's not including the entire town. If he asks just parents, he's not including elderly or people that don't have uh, kids or children themselves. So he should be choosing C, 50 randomly chosen people, but they're living in the town. Which would be a random sample? Selecting the first five students who enter a class to be on the committee, asking 20 people who enter the movies about their favorite movie. Well, if you're entering the movies, that's prob probably, <clears throat> you're talking about a favorite movie, so I'm not sure about that one. Asking 10 students who enter the lunchroom about their favorite lunch, surveying every third person who enters the mall about his or her favorite store. So you're looking for a random sample, okay? So you don't wanna ask the last 20 people, okay? That's not random. You don't wanna ask the first five students on the class to be in the committee. That's not random. Asking the first 10 students to enter the lunchroom, that's not random because you're not getting a variety of people. You might be getting Mr. Um, Mr. Drew's class because that's the first class that's able to enter the, the gym. Asking the last 20 people who enter the movies, well, that again could be people at the very end or people who are always late. Asking the first five kids, well, that could be your early birds or your super enthusiastic kids. You're leaving out your, you know, your kids that may have had something else going on. So surveying every third person who enters the mall about his or her favorite store. That one is the best one because you're being, it's completely random. Every third person, they're entering the mall and you're talking about their favorite store. 
in the mall. So it all goes together. Anne wants to know how many students in her senior class plan on going to a four-year university after graduation. Which sample would give Anne the most accurate information? How many students in her senior class? Okay, asking 25 seniors who are in the Honor Society. Asking 25 seniors in the cafeteria during lunch. Asking 25 students taking a foreign language. Asking 25 seniors that are on a sports, on a school sports team. Okay. Well, when you're talking about honor society, that's like a club. So you're only asking students in a specific club and they want to, and she wants to know about her whole senior class. So you're excluding everyone that's not in the club. It's the same with the sports team. If you are only asking kids on sports teams, you're excluding everyone that doesn't play sports. Okay, if you're asking 25 seniors taking a foreign language class, well, what happens if they're not taking a foreign language class? You're not allowing everybody to have an equal opportunity to be surveyed. So that's why the answer is B, because you're asking 25 seniors in the cafeteria during lunch. So you're just going in the cafeteria, you have no other criteria other than they're seniors and it's lunchtime. So you're most likely to get the most random selection. The PTA, the Parent Teacher Organization or Association, wants to determine the student's choice of, a, of new school shirts. Which group would be best to survey? 20 students chosen randomly gathered outside at dismissal time. 10 students randomly chosen from each homeroom class. All students in the third period gym class all students at one table in the cafeteria. Okay, so they want to determine the student's choice of new shirts. So you're talking about, you want to survey every student. So 20 students chosen uh, that are gathered outside at dismissal time, well, they're probably friends, so they probably have similar, similar opinions. You're not including everybody. And if you think about HMS, we dismissal all we dismiss all over the place. At one table in the cafeteria, well, typically kids that think the same way all sit together. All the students in the third period gym class, well, what happens if you don't have gym? You have no chance of being asked. It should be 10 randomly chosen students from each, that's where it gets, that's where it's important, each homeroom class. So you're randomly picking kids out of each of the homerooms. Joanna wants to determine her favorite movie, uh, I'm sorry, Joanna wants to determine the favorite movie of the seventh grade students in her school, which would be the best way to conduct this survey. Survey 30 randomly selected seventh grade students in her school. Survey all the seventh grade students in her math class. So it's all the kids, but they have to be in her math class. Survey 20 seventh grade students on her bus. Survey all of her seventh grade friends. Okay, so if we're just talking about her friends, they probably feel the same way she does. If we're talking about the kids that are on her bus, we're not including any kids that get home any other way. If we only talk about the kids in her math class, well, we're missing out on every other kid that could, it could be in the seventh grade. It's going to be A, 30 randomly selected 7th grade students in her school. So it's like taking our, our rosters and our, like our class lists and just saying, okay, randomly pick 30. Kyle wants to know the average age of people living in his state when they first get their driver's permit. Which group will give Kyle the most random sample? The average age of people living in his state when they get their first driver's permit. 10 recent high school graduates in his state. Okay. 100 students in his state who have just completed driver's education. Every 10th person entering a grocery store in different parts of the state. Every 10th parent dropping kids off at elementary schools in different parts of the state. 
Okay, so he wants to know average age of people living in his state. Okay, so people means everything, not just recent graduates, not people that are close to getting their driver's license. He means old people, young people, children, whatever. He means people. Okay, so A is out. 100 students who've just completed driver's education. Well, what happens if you're 16 and you don't want to take driver's ed? You don't want to drive a car or you don't have the chance to drive a car. Like you're, there's no way that you're going to get a car. Every 10th person entering a grocery store in different parts of the state. Well, that one looks promising because that includes everybody. Every 10th uh, parent dropping kids off at elementary schools. Well, that doesn't... If they're dropping their kids off, they automatically have a car. That doesn't include people that aren't parents. It doesn't include people that send their kids on a bus or parents that have their children walk. So the answer would be C. A school librarian wants to know which genre of novels to add to the library's collection. Which survey method would provide the best representative sample? So you want it to represent the school librarian. So you want it to represent the school and it needs to go in the library's collection. Asking every teacher in her school. Okay. Asking all the students in a, t in a teacher's homeroom. Asking every fifth student who enters the cafeteria. Asking students who have checked out graphic novels. Well, if I want a representative sample and I'm just asking students who have checked out graphic novels, they're probably going to want graphic novels. If I'm asking just teachers in the school, well, teachers sometimes have a good idea of what kids want to read, but not necessarily. I mean, I read what I want to read, and I suggest things that I want to read. I'm not necessarily, as a math teacher, going to know what kids want to read. Okay, asking all the students in a teacher's homeroom. Well, that doesn't give every kid an opportunity to answer the survey. It doesn't allow for every kid to have a chance. So, you know, you may be in a homeroom where they all like to read or you're in a homeroom where all the kids don't like to read or whatever. You want to ask every fifth student who enters the cafeteria because it's random. Every seventh grader is going in the cafeteria and you're going to get the best representative sample. All right, for her music appreciation class, Anja surveys the students at two local colleges to determine their favorite kind of music. The results are shown in the table below. So you have males and females and the information that they have. Okay, so more male college students enjoy rap music than female college students. Well, that's pretty close together, 49 and 50. So, and it says more male students enjoy it. Well, it's actually more females. So A is out. Classical music is the least favorite musical choice of college students. Well, it's the least favorite choice of males, but not females. Because pop is female's least favorite. More female college students prefer country music to rock music. So we're looking at female college students prefer country to rock. Well, that's not true. They like rock music better. So we're going to hope that the last one's right. Rap music is the most favorite musical choice of college students. Well, if I look at it, rap music is the highest in, in both males and females across all five categories. So D would be the most appropriate inference. All right, so this is kind of a blast from yesterday. So um, depending on how fast we get through the questions in the Pear Deck, that's kind of going to determine what we do with this part. So Valerie surveyed employees at her company about the number of computers in their homes. The results are shown in the table. Based on these results, which statement is true? The number of employees without a calculator is less than 5%. I'm sorry, without a computer is less than 5%. Well, that's three employees out of, so I'm adding these up. So that's eight plus six would be 14 plus 16, that's 30. And that would be 100%, right? 
So I'm going to divide going this way and multiply going this way. So 100 divided by 30. And then I'm going to multiply by 3. I get 10%, so that's not true. The number of employees that have one computer is 5%. Wow, that's five students. So I don't have to erase this part, the total part, because it's going to stay the same. So I'm going to do 100 divided by 30 times 5. I get 16%. So that's out. Less than 10% of employees have three computers. Okay, three computers would be six people. Okay, so 100 divided by 30 times 6, well, I get 9.333, which is less, so I think it's C so far. More than 50% of the employees have two computers. Well, 16. Let me double check that math because something's not right. 100 divided by 30 times 6. Yep. So let's check the last one. 100 divided by 30 times 16. I get 53%. Per let's check to make sure I added correctly. Yes, I did. All right, so less than 10% of employees have three computers. I'm thinking it's D, but I just... Something's telling me about C, so that's why I keep checking it. 100 divided by 30, and then I'm going to multiply by 6. Ah, I hit plus instead of multiply. I knew something wasn't right. This one isn't true. This is 20%. So it has to be D. So that's why when you get down to two answers, you really want to try everything out. You want to rework it. You don't want to just guess. Okay, a store, a shoe store is recording uh, two types of shoes, the first 50 customers purchased each day over a two-week period. The average results are in the table below. So my total is 50 because they're telling me that, so I don't need to add up all those numbers, but I could. So on average, the 15% of customers purchase tennis shoes. So tennis shoes is 15. So I'm going to do... 100 divided by 50, and then times 15. So 100 divided by 15, or I'm sorry, 100 divided by 50 is 2. 2 times 15 is 30, so that's out. On average, 16% of customers bought running shoes. Well, I don't have to change the other parts. So 100 divided by 50 is 2. 2 times 16 is 32%. On average, 31% of customers purchase shoes, tennis shoes or running shoes. Well, 100 divided by 50 is 2. 2 times 31 is 62, so that's out. On average, 62% of students, of customers purchase tennis shoes or running shoes. Ah, that's the correct one, 62%. All right, the National Music Magazine surveyed several random samples of 900 people. So that's my total. I'm going to write that down. Um, to determine their favorite type of music, the average of the responses are shown in the table below. So of the people surveyed, 10% of people did not have a music preference. So I'm going to divide going this way, multiply going this way. 
So 100 divided by 900 is 0 0.9. 0 0.9 times 90. So 100 divided by 900. Oh, I'm sorry, I get 0.111 times 90. I get 10. I think, I think it's A. Let's check the next one. Of the people surveyed, 50% chose rock or country. Well, that's 510. So 100 divided by 900 times 510. I get 56.6, .6, so 57%. Of the people surveyed, less than one-third preferred rap music. So, rap would be 300. So, I'm dividing going this way and multiplying. So, 3 divided by 900 times 300. Well, I get one, so one third did. So it's not less than, it's equal to. So it's definitely not that one. Of the people surveyed, one in four preferred country music. So I'm gonna divide going that way. So four divided by 900, and then I'm gonna multiply by 290. And I get 1.28. So that's not true because it's more than one fourth. So it's got to be A because this one was too high. All right. Alex asked 70 students, so that's the total, at his school which fundraiser they would like to attend. The responses are shown in the table below. Most students do not know what fundraiser they would attend. Well, that's only five out of 70. That's not most. Most would be more than half. About 12% of students chose a candy sale as a fundraiser. So 100%, 12. So I divide and then multiply. So 100 divided by 70 times 12. I get 17%. More than 50% said they would choose a carnival or car wash. Okay, so 22 plus 14 is 36. Well, 36 is more than half, so I think it's C. Less than 30% chose a bake sale or candy sale. Okay, bake sale or candy sale. So that would be... What, 29? So less than 30%. So 100 divided by 70 and then times 29. I get 41%. So it has to be C. So your cool down today is based on the set of questions that we asked first. So a high school student wants to add a new after school club. The administration wants to conduct a survey to find out what new after-school club students would be interested in having? Which group would give the administration the most unbiased sample? So bias means that, um, like I have a bias towards education because I'm a teacher, right? So I'm all about education. So would you ask every student in the band, every fourth student in each homeroom, every third student that plays a school sport, or every fourth student riding home on the school bus? because you want to be able to include everybody. Um, Tayana wants to conduct a survey to determine what kind of hobbies students at her school enjoy, which is the best group for her to survey uh, to form a random sample. Because if you're talking about hobbies, you want to get, you don't want to be specific to any type of club. Students in the math club, students in the school choir, students in each homeroom, students on the basketball team. I hope you have a great rest of your day.